Welcome back to Beyond the Gate, our Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood podcast. I'm Megan. And I'm Meg. And we are talking about episode 18, The Arrogant Palm of a Small Human. It's weird. Yeah, title. weird, weird, weird title. And I, I honestly was like trying to figure out like what that what does could it mean? mean, but <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't able to help with anything. Um, I feel like better episodes later fit that title better yeah but. yeah uh yeah this this one is also kind of a mouthful yeah yeah also it was just kind of an episode with a lot of different things happening okay so um in this episode ed's journey to a distant land of legend offers surprising new t- details behind mustang's alleyway encounter with ross after a fateful encounter of his own elric learns a stunning secret about winry's parents Mm. And this covers varying chapters of the manga. Things are yes, it's, so scattered yeah. right now. Um, so manga chapter 37, The Body of a Criminal. Uh, chapter 40, Philosopher from the West. And chapter 41, On the Palm of an Arrogant Human Being. Mm-hmm. No, it was, it was really all over the place. Because even, like, there's, like certain sections of those chapters that are in other episodes so it was yeah. like i'm reading ahead and this is like, happening a lot this is a yeah. trend yeah so i had to skip around quite a bit when i was reading all right well we can jump right in ed as you remember from the last episode ed and armstrong are heading to risen and they have arrived um when they're like at the train station and we see um may is there but there's like we see her but there's nothing like no interaction no, nothing like she does, it doesn't even seem that like she sees them but yeah. obviously i don't know it's just uh, a little you know add in for the for the yeah. fans to go oh we know her yep um and ed of course is very confused why they're there but then and, and honestly he gets even more confused when they <laughs> see um lieutenant breda and then um, we go back to Al and Winry, who are also confused. Um, they are still in in um, Central, and they're like, this doesn't make any sense, because, like, Winry is there. She can fix Ed's arm. And they also haven't heard from Ed either. But then um, Ling arrives to provide all the answers. Um, he, like, jumps through through the window and... Um, that's kind of where we we leave that. He doesn't believe in doors. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Kind of like a certain platypus family. <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh darn it! I was gonna. I thought it might be fun at the beginning of not at the beginning of every episode, but like just to like give an update on like what we're watching. We're watching. Yeah, yeah. I thought it. I thought it might that might be fun. Anyway. Um, Ed and um, Armstrong and Breda, they are traveling through the desert to to Xerxes. Um, who is he's acting as? No, no, I can't remember. Is he acting as their guard, or do they meet him there? Uh, they meet up with Fu, and okay. yeah. they have another man. I think his name is Han. Yeah, I think Han that's what I saw. Yeah, they never, he, they, they never he's guiding him them in the anime, but in the manga, yeah, yeah, yeah. he guides um, them through the the vast desert yes yeah and then so they arrive they arrive in xerxes which is kind of in the middle of the desert and i think it's supposed to be like kind of in between um Amestris and and shing mm-hmm. um and we learn that xerxes is like an ancient um civilization that was destroyed in one night and the there was only one survivor and they went to Amestris and taught them alchemy um, and then we learned from Fu that um, Elkestri has a very similar history where a man came, I think, came from Xerxes and taught them Elkestri. Yeah. Uh, and a brief note about this little trip they're taking through the desert. It's kind of nice to see all these characters who wouldn't normally be together, you know, in the same position. But <laughs> poor Ed, he's he's just dying in the heat. He, and yeah. we learned something very important about him. Uh, extreme climates are hard on him because of his metal prosthetics. So his auto mail overheats in, in the desert. And in the manga, he even notes 
it's so hot you could fry an egg on it right now. So the part where <laughs> his metal meets the skin is like just sizzling. Yeah, that it's, had oh hurt so much. Uh, yeah. Um, and then when they when they're arriving in Xerxes, um, we kind of see Ed take note of a symbol. Um, but then he's distracted when when somebody yells his name and it's Ross. Um, she's alive. Uh, yay. <laughs> I remember being very excited the first time. I was excited, but the uh, payoff was like immediate. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Like they didn't like, oh, last episode. Oh, she's dead. And then literally like five she's minutes alive. into this episode, she's alive. Like it, I don't know. I mean, timeline wise, it tracks because Armstrong would have taken Ed right after the events happened mm-hmm. to go find her. And cause Roy set this all up. But in the manga, they they kind of put the next story and interject it in between when mm-hmm. Ross is supposedly killed and when Ed finds out she's alive. So that makes it pay off even bigger when you're reading it. Um, yeah, but honestly, I think the, I would have would have liked that better. But right, it's it's right. still chronologically, it still is pretty close well, to what happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then of course, um, Armstrong like immediately is shirtless and he's like trying to hug Ross and she's like very, what? no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's very adamant in avoiding him. Um, and then, uh, we see what kind of went down, um, how, how Ross survived. Uh, we see Mustang is talking with Breda and how like this whole like Ross situation is very suspicious like how she was arrested and they like announced her guilt before uh there's no fair trial or yeah, anything yeah um and then they get a call from Pullman and uh Barry wants to to talk to Mustang yes I <laughs> I love this scene because when when Barry calls Roy in his office you know, he's about to to spill something big and Roy goes, oh, hi. like he's he changes his tone immediately to a more jovial one and pretends like he's talking to a girlfriend on the phone. And he's like, oh, why don't I call you back? I'm at work right now. And they go to the phone, the phone booth, you know, the one uh-huh. where, where he was. I don't know why they, they keep they keep bringing us back um, to it. The closest one to central, I guess. <laughs> but. But Roy um, picks up the conversation on the outside line just in case somebody was listening in or in case, you know, some prying eyes and ears came into his office. But (laughs) I really like it in the manga because the conversation goes on a lot longer. Uh, When Barry first calls Roy, uh, he he picks up and, you know, he's trying to to sway it. So it's like, oh, I'm talking to a girlfriend. And Barry actually plays along and it's super hilarious because it's the spelling changes. And by the end of the conversation, Barry goes, bye, I love you (laughs) and hangs up the phone. And then Roy immediately calls back on an outside line and Barry just goes, don't ever make a fool out of me again. (laughs) I just love that he plays along with these guys. Yeah, it's it's great. Like I said, he just he just wants friends and it's. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but also he wants a redemption back. arc meg <laughs> wants barry's redemption arc uh, mm, no <laughs> i don't know about that uh but i i enjoy him yeah. um and so while they're while they're talking um barry basically is like well ross is definitely innocent and mustang and him hatch a plan to free her um after they got off the phone Breda. He sends Breda to get a bunch of ingredients to make a human corpse. Not human transmutation, but a dummy no, that looks... Yeah, just like a that. dummy. Mustang. I don't know. It, it's kind of sad because he's like, I have plenty of experience burning corpses. Which... Um, yeah. But also, I don't know. This scene... I don't know. There's a few details that they miss like that's, that are in the, in the manga. Like one, they they Barry like knocks out Fullman when when, yeah. when he's talking. So like, so he has no idea what's. what's it's kind of to protect Fullman, so he has he kind of has an alibi. Like, oh, I was uh, being held hostage by this serial killer, and he knocked me out. I have no idea what is going on. Yeah, and he really yeah. doesn't have an idea what's going on. Poor guy. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Um, and then um. 
when Mustang like makes the corpse, he also like copies Ross's dental records. Like mm-hmm. he makes like the teeth of the corpse to be like her um her actual teeth. So that's yeah. that's how that's how they're able to to pass the corpse off as her. And then also, I don't know, in the manga it seemed like Colonel was actually orchestrating everything with like Ross's like arrest and like everything that was printed in the newspaper. Um, but in the anime, it seems like he doesn't know, like he's just finding out as the public finds out, which I thought was an interesting detail that they decided yeah. to to change. Um, I think it makes him seem more impressive because it's like he's coming up with these ideas and just acting immediately and. Mm -hmm. there's more forethought to it in the manga but it's it's like way more action-packed and thrilling when it's like in the moment in the anime Mm -hmm. yeah i like it this way too and also i think it makes more sense because like (laughs) why why would he have any reason to like frame ross but although actually there i feel like his reason is which they they talk about later might be to like draw out the the real killers um I don't know. I was kind of confused when reading, so I didn't come to the same conclusion as you did, but... I Okay, I I don't think they ever, from what I've read in the manga, I don't think they they say what his reasoning is, but that would be, if I was him, that would be (laughs) my line of thought. (laughs) Uh, But I don't know. So, anyway, then we see what happened with Ross and Mustang in the alley, except that this time we see him, like, pull out the body and burn that instead and then like throw Ross in a in like a trash can and she escapes with havoc um and then um we see that Fu is bringing Fu brought Ross to the east um and also another detail in the last episode we were like confused why like oh why why did Barry release um Ling when he said that this he was from why. the east and this is why because they needed they escape. needed yeah, they needed someone to bring Ross there. Um, so Mustang actually struck a deal with Ling um, to tell, to have Barry tell him about how he's immortal. And then um, in immortal exchange, quotation Fu, marks. Yeah, in exchange, Fu would bring Ross to the East. Um, after they finished telling the story of how, how Ross was saved, um, Ed begrudgingly admits that the colonel knew what he was doing. Um, <laughs> it's kind of cute. Like, He's smiling. Yeah. It's like, ah, I admit it. This time, uh, this time, he knew what he was doing. This time, yeah. <laughs> um, and then at the same time, Al and Winry are learning from Ling what happened. Um, and we see, I, I don't know, I thought it was kind of funny. We see, like, Lan Pan, like, standing outside of the window, <laughs> watching over yeah. her, watching over her master. Um, but uh, note about Long Fawn, though. So I'm, th- this was kind of surprising, but in the manga, something that, you know, they never mention happens. Um, Long Fawn has her own little adventure that's glossed over here where she gets to fight Envy because Envy was following Barry's body to where she was hiding out with Fullman. So there's like this whole scene of her fighting against Envy. And I think Gluttony comes into the fray later. And there will be future battles where maybe bits and pieces from this scene were added into the anime, but it was it was a total shock to me, and it was kind of cool to see her just stand her own and get a, a whole scene to herself, because we mm-hmm. don't know too much about her yet. But yeah, anyway, getting back to the actual anime canon brotherhood storyline. Yes. Yeah, Um. so now they are discussing, like, everything that everybody knows in in Xerxes. They're like basically trading information about the homunculi and um Colonel Hughes death and like sharing sharing everything that everybody knows. Um and it's and it's funny because then we see Armstrong pull out his his awesome um artistic skills. He draws like all the homunculi um or all the ones that they've met so far. Yeah, I was Okay, so obviously he's awesome. They they look very accurate. He has greed in there, but he has a picture of lust. Who who on our team met lust? Did did any of them see her? 
Because at the um, Quick Laboratory, he well, saw Ed. Mm-hmm. Ed did. Maybe Ed is just. Oh, that's right. Very... That's right. Lust was Lust was yeah, there yeah, when she, she killed there. when she killed one of the armored guys. Mm-hmm. All right, I was yeah, and also that. also I think <laughs> didn't Ed draw pictures of Lust and Envy in his oh in that's his right room. Like, <laughs> I saw the one of Envy that was oh they look yeah. terrible for Ed. <laughs> Uh, when did they meet Gluttony then? When was that? I don't know that. Or was he in the pictures that Armstrong? I don't. I don't. I don't know if I saw Gluttony. Okay. Okay. He's probably not in the pictures then, which is kind of funny because he's just he's like the lackey that they never see. Mm Hmm. Well. Yes. Um, Yeah. (laughs) That's uh, not a spoiler. Everyone knows they're going to meet all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Then they ask Ed what he's going to do next. And then, like, um, he, like, remembers Gracia's words. And then he gives, like, this big speech about, <laughs> about like, um, moving forward and how he... And also, he, like, he like makes a promise that he's not going to let anyone else get hurt. Yeah. Um, I like, in the manga, Breda actually punches Ed. And yeah. he's like, you idiot, why did you talk to Gracie? You're not supposed to tell the relatives any of this stuff. It's dangerous. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but he's just he, a 15 year old kid. Yeah, yeah. he sobers up and he's like, what did she say to you? And Ed just tells him about, you know, how she said to keep moving forward and all that stuff. So, Braid is a nice guy. He just, his his military um training kind of came into play before his heart caught up to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then we learn that Ross is heading to Shing. Um, and it's kind of sad because they ask if her, if she wants them to tell uh, her parents that they're, that she's alive. And they're like, she's like, no, because then they might let it slip. And it, it's like, basically, she's going to let them think that she's a murderer so for now. Sad. Yeah. And also she, in the manga, at least they, they also, she also tells them not to tell Rosh either her best friend <laughs> yeah that and he's like yeah, I don't know, the heart. He, he said like his face would give it away <laughs> <laughs> and then it's kind of a sweet goodbye because she's like if mustang ever needs me i'm indebted to him and i'll do anything so mustang has won another person to his side um and then also <laughs> she's like ed's like i still owe you for for slapping me so just it's just a sweet goodbye, and then um, after they leave, she's she's very sad and afraid, which I would be too. She literally is leaving everything that she knows. I don't know. It's kind of sweet because Fu is encouraging her, and she's like, "I can expect to find a paradise on the other side of this desert." Um, and that's kind of where we leave her. Um, Bye, Ross. We miss yeah, you already. I, I really like her. Yeah. But then we go to Mustang is talking to Elizabeth again in his office. Um, but then we kind of see that he is speaking in some kind of code. Um, cause we see like everyone listening in. Um, on the his subordinates uh, are listening, listening in on, in a, the yeah, line. on his conversation. We see Fury and Havoc. And then so we, we learn that they have code names. So Elizabeth is Reza and mm-hmm. Jacqueline is gene havoc and then if you think was that it's, is it kate is that what kate. yep get kate yeah. fury kate yeah so i, I love <laughs> i love how um this is this is a manga thing but um fury is listening to the conversation with black hayate he's got like all this equipment and radio stuff in front of him and he's like eating some protein bar or something and he's i think he's enjoying every second of listening to roy flirt with elizabeth and he he turns to Black Hayate and says, this is the most I've ever heard your owner speak, boy. Because <laughs> Riza just, she's not a talkative person. No. She prefers to speak with her guns. <laughs> her her um, weapons and, and her arms. <laughs> yes. Yes. Both. <laughs> um, but while they're talking, um, Barry's body comes in through the window and attacks um, Barry and Fullman. Um, this is confusing. Yes, I'm referring to Barry's, I'm saying Barry's body as like the monster that we saw at the end of the episode. And then Barry, just Barry as the the guy in the armor. <laughs> uh, Barry doesn't want, want 
um him killed he's trying to because they need they need this this guy for information um then havoc rushes in and he starts shooting <laughs> at, the, at the at the guy and they're like it's just kind of chaos um yes and, and he's the first also woman, he's, like doesn't recognize him at first yes um <laughs> he's in disguise he's got a mask yeah. on but then he he smells the air he's like oh it smells like an ashtray a smoker so havoc <laughs> Havoc's just like what do you think the mask is for <laughs> you amateur <laughs> he mentions yeah. in the manga that Fulman's never seen combat mm-hmm. so i'm i'm wondering yeah when, when havoc did but Obviously, he's yeah. got more experience. Yeah, he does, and I, it's which is kind of funny because I always think that Fullman is like his superior, but it's actually the other way around. Yeah, because Fullman's well, I thought he was older. I actually, I don't know their ages, but I assume yeah. Fullman's older. Yeah, I did too. But and he just seems—I mean, he just seems more mature. So yeah. <laughs> uh, but then the fight goes outside because it's safer. And then there's a shot from a roof, and it gets Barry's body, I think, in in the, the hand arm, or the, in hand, the arm, yeah. yeah. And then we hear Mustang talking and, to Elizabeth again, and we, this is when we actually see that Elizabeth is Riza, um, and she's like in the tower watching watching them. Um, and then Barry realizes that it's his body, and <laughs> it's it's kind of funny because he's like, "Talk about memories." <laughs> he's so. <laughs> he's so sarcastic. <laughs> he is. Uh, yeah. So everybody's shocked about that. But then we go back to Ed in um, Xerxes, and he's looking at the symbol again, and he realizes that it looks like the symbol that we saw in the fifth laboratory. Um, it's not in. It's not like a transmutation circle, but it looks very, looks very similar. Um, and while he's trying to figure out what what it means and what it is um and Ishbalan attacks him <laughs> and i don't know it's it's very quick <laughs> you, you have to look at ed closely but it is so funny <laughs> when when the Ishbalan, like yeah when this ball attacks him because literally he just looks so annoyed <laughs> like he he just like moves out of the way like basically kind of like steps to the side and he's just like I don't know. There, there's a meme that we'll share because yes. it's, it's, it's oh, like, look, another oh, attempt on my life. My life. <laughs> and I thought it was just you know, like they say, never pause an animated film. I thought it was mm-hmm. just one of those moments because it was an in-between where he just kind of had a blank look on his face where the animators didn't animate mm-hmm. his expression. Yeah, that's what I but thought. No, too. it's not. In the manga, he has that same dead expression on his face. Yep. Like, I'm so sick of these people attacking me. Would they stop? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. And then the Ishvalan, he's not the only Ishvalan there, like a bunch of them um, come out. It seems like they're, like they're living there um, mm-hmm. and they're, they're trying, they try to take Ed hostage um, in exchange for their holy land that was taken from them. Um, and at first, and Ed's like, oh, no, they're not going to care about me. Um, and they just briefly mention, they're like, well, a, the death of a child um, triggered the, the civil war. So you never know. Um, but then this um, elderly Ishvalan woman, who they call Madame Shan, um, comes up and like tells them to stop. Ed is surprised, and she's like, "Well, we know that all Amestrians aren't bad. Um, in fact, we were saved by Amestrian doctors during the Civil War." She, she, and this boy that she's with, like they're both uh, very obviously injured, and just. While they're talking, Ed asked if these Amestrian doctors were the Rock Bells, um, and they were. Uh, they were helping helping treat the the injured Ishvalans, um, but then they tell Ed that they were killed by an Ishvalan who they saved, and we we see that um, we see Scar's arm, so we we know that it's. That it's scarred. Unless but somebody has the exact same tattoos as yeah, him. Yeah, that seems unlikely though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and they 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 tell Ed that it was um a monk who had tattoos on his arm, and I yeah. don't think that Ed realizes who it is because I don't I'm I don't know if he's seen I don't know if he's seen the I tattoos on his arm. I think that other people maybe have. The, the defining feature has. is. 
is the scar on his face. Yeah. So I'm not sure if Ed associates him with, with the, the tattoos. The, yeah. Yeah. I'd have to look back to see if he had sleeves on when he was Yeah, I can't with Ed. I can't remember back at like episode five when he was fighting him. Yeah. Like, I don't remember if um, Yes. He saw it. I'm but... I'm gonna interject in this part. Um yeah. in the manga, it's really sweet. Ed calls Winry's parents auntie and uncle Rockbell. Yeah. And that made me so <laughs> sad. <laughs> And also, spoiler for the 2003 anime, but Scar isn't actually the one who kills Winry's parents mm-hmm. in that one. There's a whole different storyline where um, the Amestrian government is mad at the Rockbells for, for saving Ishvalans, um, and they sent a soldier to eliminate them, and the soldier they sent was Roy. Mm-hmm. And I really hate that. <laughs> yeah, that was that was one of the worst. One of the more worst things in the Oh, it's so tragic. Three. It's anyway. it's so heart wrenching for Roy and Winry. And if you want to see how it goes down, just just watch just watch two thousand three Full Metal and Or don't watch it. Or don't li- but <laughs> <laughs> live, yeah. live in bliss yeah. and ignorance. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's not canon, so you don't have to you don't have to be too sad. Mm-hmm. But Ed um walks away from that conversation he's he seems he seems angry but also like resolved to find this person um yeah and he's going to visit the rockbell's grave and yes and that too bid a proper farewell for those ishvalans that they saved and he's got i feel like he's got more respect for his his auntie and uncle even though they're not really his aunt and uncle that they were so close that yeah I, they were I feel like, yeah yeah then we go back to the encounter with Barry's body. Um, the and Barry, Barry against is, Barry battle. Yeah, yeah. And Barry is so excited. He wants to chop up his body, um, but Havoc won't let him, which he's very disappointed. And also, like, in the manga, during this, like, little scene, he also mentions that his that he is just as excited as when he chopped up his first victim, which was his wife. Um, so it makes you like him a little bit less, doesn't uh, it? <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, yeah. But then in the final scene of the episode, um, Riza is like watching them fight Havoc and Barry uh, fight about um, chopping up, chopping up the body. Um, and then we see Gluttony come, come in behind um behind Riza and she shoots him but of course he just like heals from that and she looks very scared and that is the end of the episode yeah I think okay if you still have the manga you should take a picture if if you have that end credit scene but we should post it it's um the manga going Next next chapter, just kidding. And it has Risa just punching Gluttony over and over again. Yeah. He's like comatose. I, I saw that. Oh, I, I was gonna say another funny thing that I saw in the in the manga um was you know at the end of the the volumes they have like the person going to heaven. Yeah. And, yeah, that, and at the end of the um volume nine, I think. Yeah. Um it's it's Ross. <laughs> in memoir, she's like wait no wait <laughs> yeah she's like what's going on hey because <laughs> obviously she's not dead so uh, that's a nice little that's a little kind of spoiler she yeah. i love this manga because she's she's wicked <laughs> <laughs> yeah um all right that's not an episode yeah we're gonna get into voice after notes because we actually have some this time <laughs> Uh, we decided to do Breda in Fury, even though Fury hardly has any speaking roles. We felt the need to kind of like finish out the Mustang gang here. Mm-hmm. So, Heyman's Breda is played by Jeremy Inman, who is Android 16 from Dragon Ball Z, Al Capone from Soul Eater, and Suzuka from Yu Yu Hakusho. And then Kane Fury is played by Kevin M. Connolly, who's Castro from Hunter Hunter, Pell from One Piece, and Tomochika Saikyo from Oron High, High School Host Club. I Those Oron names kill me. I can't. <laughs> it's hard to just read them and pronounce them off the cuff. Listeners, well, I think you're. Me. I think you're doing a you're doing a good job. Thanks. But also, I've never watched a show, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, name meanings. Um, 
I couldn't really find anything on Heyman's. I, I mean, all I could find was that it was German or Dutch origin. And the only, I, I don't think this is related at all, but there's a Hebrew name Heyman. And that's, but I think that's spelled way differently. And I think that's a different name entirely. But, and also I wouldn't like that name for him because Heyman was a bad guy in the book of Esther. So, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Breda. I couldn't find a meaning for his last name either. This guy just doesn't, he's a man of mystery. Um, but Breda is the name of a city in the Netherlands. So it's got that going for him. Um, <laughs> Kane Fairy was a little bit better, but Kane is of Hebrew origin. It means acquire. And then Fury as a surname is of old French origin. And it means flowered or fancy. Acquired fanciness. Nice Good job, Fury. <laughs> you know, it doesn't seem like a very material person though <laughs> no no he's honestly we haven't gotten to know him too well but he's he seems like a solid dude yeah he seems like a sweetie reminds me of a character from a show called mash named radar who kind of had the same position uh as fury does in the military just all around good guy very um very sweet probably loves animals too just, just like fury does Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, getting back to our notes, animation expertise. Um, it, I just had a little side note for this episode, but I love when drawings are shown in animated shows. Like seeing Armstrong's illustrations, I love it, and I always wonder which animator was in charge of making that, or did they just like copy and paste right from the manga? I really, I really like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fun. All right, so. I thought it would be kind of fun to talk about um when when Mustang was was uh burning the body it got it got me thinking what does a human corpse smell like um <laughs> Yeah welcome to the um, show everybody and yeah I'm sorry if you've ever had to smell human uh, burning human flesh be terrible but so uh Mustang says that he he makes uh he transmutes the the corpse and they don't really list too many ingredients in in the anime but like I think basically he lists a bunch like of the ingredients that the Elric used to make to try to um perform a human transmutation um plus 60 pounds of pork. Uh <laughs> Yeah, um, that wasn't no. That wasn't for the transmutation. That was for his cookout later. <laughs> <laughs> My Google search history is now ruined. <laughs> <laughs> Looking up what what a human corpse smells like, but it's kind of doesn't smell like just one thing because, like, you've got um, muscle and hair and skin and organs and all that fun stuff. Um, so I found this, this one article and I will just, uh, share what they, what they had to say. And I, I, there's multiple articles that, uh, that I found that all kind of agreed. Uh, so first, uh, muscle tissue is a red meat and it, and it kind of smells like steak when it's burning um but body fat um smells more like pork so there's the there's uh-huh. the 60 pounds of pork um but then also a burning human can also smell like um like we're full of blood so can have kind of a coppery aroma to it um and then also interesting, like your spinal fluid um, has like a sweet smell, which is interesting. Huh. Um, but like I think you you mentioned earlier, like burning hair is like the worst, one of the worst smells because it's um, it has uh, keratin in it, and keratin has a lot of a large amounts of the amino acid cysteine, which con- contains sulfur. So, like, burning hair just smells yeah. like sulfur. But basically, like, all those together is just, like, 
a gross, a gross smell. What what I mostly what I was reading was like rotting, just gross. Yeah. Ew. I hope nobody ever has to smell that, but people oh. do. And actually, what I what was interesting was like. A lot of the articles I was finding were like firefighters like answering mm. it because like I read like yeah if you're a fighter fighter most likely you will probably smell a burning corpse at least once in your life. Gross and hey. sad. Yeah, uh, <laughs> let's move on from that. <laughs> the story elements analysis, uh, misdirection using misdirection in your stories. The audience is led to believe one thing. In this case, that Mustang killed Ross. And then it is revealed later on that something else happened that, like, he helped her escape. I I am impressed when authors and script writers can use misdirection and actually fool the audience. Mm-hmm. Um, one, <laughs> one example I'm thinking of right now is Death Note. There was a twist in there that I never saw coming. So, um... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, but- that whole show is, like... <laughs> it was hard it was hard to be like what's gonna happen next yeah because um, stories usually follow a pattern i mean that's what the whole you know mm-hmm. uh, hero's journey is about having a concrete pattern for stories to follow and and humans are kind of habitual creatures so when something surprises you in a story it's it's kind of amazing uh mm-hmm. this yeah this exactly one exactly surprise yeah, us say- I wasn't super surprised. I, mean, I wasn't surprised that she was alive thing... and that Mustang helped her, but yeah. it was impressive to see how he did how it. How he did, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I'm sure it came as a shock to some people who were expecting Mustang to be like a villain or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Did you ever think that Mustang was a villain? Like at any point in the story? I was afraid that they were going to spin it that way, but I really didn't think so, no. I would agree. Sometimes I did think he was going to be like, like neutral, like he's not bad, but he's yeah. not good. Yeah, um, I did question his motivations at times. Yeah. All right. That's the end of the episode. So, Megan, what was your favorite line? <laughs> Mine came from Ed. No one calls me out. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> he's in the middle of. <laughs> He's in the middle of screaming about how Mustang uh, called him a, a bratty kid in his message, but <laughs> immediately goes from, like, anger mode to, oh, wait, what? <laughs> mm-hmm. The animation is hilarious. Yes. What was your favorite line? Mine is also from Ed when they're, when he's giving his big speech about what he's going to do. What his future plans are, um, he says, Al and I committed a taboo, but we still have people that help us. Some people get angry at us and others support us silently. Um, which I thought, I don't know, I just liked it. Um, I think it's a good, a good message for people who, mm -hmm. you know, when you, you do something that you think no one can ever forgive you for and you still have people who who rally around you, Mm -hmm. I think that helps Ed and Al just move forward. Yeah, yeah, because if you think about, like, everybody had treated them like, oh, you guys are the worst ever, can't believe you tried to do that, like, their morale and and motivation to, like, try to change for the better would yeah, I, not, I mean, I can see not it. have I, been there. No. I can see it going two ways, because people can respond differently if if people shun you, you can either respond with um, kind of a sense of grief or or get down on yourself mm-hmm. and just shut down entirely, or you can respond in a way it's like everyone thinks this of me, so I might as well be that thing. Hmm. All right. What was the? What did we learn in this episode? I guess to be prepared. Mustang had a plan and he carried it through. Um, and we can learn a thing or two from him because we added this moral at the last second before starting this <laughs> yes we did actually honestly it was like a moment of inspiration <laughs> we were just like chatting last night and we were like what's gonna be the moral of the episode or the, the what do we learn and megan said something and i was like that's it perfect also isn't it funny how be prepared is a song from the lion king 
that Scar <laughs> sings, and we've got a Scar in this show. <laughs> yes, who is also a bad guy. Also, I feel like, honestly, if your name is Scar, like... You're destined to be bad. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, uh, show me a Scar that's good. Come on, a good guy that has a creepy name. All right. Who pushed the story forward in this episode? Mustang did, because he told his subordinates to show Ed the truth, which is very important and appreciated. And we also wanted to give some love to Barry the Chopper. Um, he, again. <laughs> yeah, again. We're going we're gonna to sing we're gonna... praises as long as he's on our <laughs> side. Um, but yeah, he, he gave some important intel, and he, he played along with Mustang's plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. That's all we've got. Follow us on Instagram at <laughs> Full Metal Beyond the Gate and check out um, our YouTube channel. Um, I think it's just called Beyond the Gate. Yeah. Um, and if you have any questions or comments or art, you can um, DM us on Instagram or email us at Full Metal Beyond the Gate at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you guys be awesome and yeah that's all we've got we will be back next week with another episode all right bye bye